Have you noticed the spike in demand for graphical engineers lately? Looks like it is still like the hottest party in tech. I just saw this report from Gartner that says by 2027, 60% of enterprises are going to be using graphical APIs. And, of course, where the big guys go, you know the startups aren't far behind. Now, what's super interesting is how the API world keeps evolving. Like, remember when SOAP was a thing? Well, maybe you don't. Especially if you're Gen Z or Gen Alpha seriously, who came up with these names? Gen Beta then Gamma next, sounds like we're naming comic book superheroes. But just in case you haven't heard of SOAP, SOAP was this big deal API protocol back in the day. It stands for Simple Object Access Protocol, which, spoiler alert, was anything but simple. It had this whole formal set of rules for sending and receiving messages between client and server. It needs to be in ZML format. There is a specific SOAP envelope format which needs to be followed. It was protocol agnostic, so it could run on HTTP, SMTP, FTP. Basically, it was like the overachiever who could do everything. But yeah, it came with the catch it was slow and kind of painful to work with. You had to follow the exact format or it just wouldn't work. So, naturally, there were devs who were like, we're done with this SOAP thing. And you know how developers are, when they get bored or annoyed, they either drink, or they build something way cooler, or sometimes, they smoke and still build cool stuff. Enter Roy Fielding, who basically had this genius idea for REST APIs. His thought process was simple, let's make APIs easy. REST is like that chill manager at work who just tells you can work from anywhere and doesn't micromanage. It's got rules, but they're more like suggestions. So instead of saying, work from office or you're fired, REST is more like, hey, use standard HTTP methods you know, like get, post, put, delete and just focus on what you're working with. And then, bam equals REST APIs took off. eBay was the first to jump ship, and then Amazon and all the other big players followed. REST became the cool kid on the block. Ah, 201 to back when Gangnam Style was all the rage, and the world was just discovering avocado toast. But, guess who else was having a big moment? Mark Zuckerberg or Zuck, as we like to call him. And let me tell you, he wasn't just vibing to Psy. He was busy figuring out how to get more of us glued to Facebook and get more eyeballs. Facebook team was trying to figure out how to make news feed smoother, faster, and show a ton of data without turning your phone into a potato. Back then, we were all using 3G and every time you scrolled through your feed, Facebook's back and had to make a bunch of REST API calls just to show you, like, who liked that cat meme. Now, how it works in Graphical is the client sends a query that's basically like, hey Graphical, I want the post with ID cat meme 1 to 3 yeah, just like ordering at a drive through there's a main node representing the cat meme post. From there, branches sprout out, with five different nodes that is of author, likes, user, comments, and reactions. You see this? This is the final graphical query for this use case, all the data in one clean request. So, with graphical, your app makes fewer requests, which means it loads faster even if your network is slower than a turtle on a treadmill. Graphical is built around for key components of types, resolvers, mutations, and subscriptions. A type definition often written as type or type def is like creating a blueprint for what kind of data a particular object will have. It's how you define what your API can return or accept. In this way client making an API call knows exactly what to expect, no surprises, no guessing games. But hold on here comes the real star of the show. Query is your entry point. It defines what data you can get, how you can ask for it, and makes sure you follow the rules. In this example, we can see query has two fields. One is post, this is to get all the posts and another is to get specific post as per post it. Then comes the resolvers. They are the functions that handle how data is fetched when a specific query, mutation, or subscription is made. They act as the behind the scenes workers for every field defined in your schema, connecting your graphical queries to your data sources like databases, REST APIs, or any other services. If you're feeling fed up with your developer job and have the urge to wipe out some data before making your grand exit, well, that's where graphical mutations come in handy. So to insert, update, and delete, we have mutations for that in graphical. We'll define the type mutation with a resolver method called delete post. In the resolvers, we'll implement the delete post method, which will remove a specific post based on its ID and then return the deleted post. In graphical, subscriptions are a way to enable real-time communication between your client and server. They allow the server to push updates to the client whenever specific events occur. This makes them perfect for scenarios where you want to keep clients updated in real time like tracking your Uber cab if it gets stuck in water. Graphical becomes instantly famous among developers and was quite popular as BFF, commonly known as backend for Frotnet. It only gives you exactly what you ask for, no drama or extra data. Then there was a rapid adoption of Graphical. Larger enterprises like IBM, Atlassian, and Airbnb began using Graphical, 
which helped establish it as a mainstream API solution. This, in turn, encouraged a lot of startups to also jump on board. Despite all its capabilities, GraphQL has experienced slower adoption over the past few years. This can be attributed to various reasons and common misconceptions surrounding it. Then here comes the old guard of developers. They've been working with REST APIs since the dawn of Jason, and they know every trick to squeeze performance out of them. They'd say things like, why fix what isn't broken? In March, Max Doiber, a well-known developer, stirred up a lively conversation on Twitter with a thread where he asked a simple question, why aren't you using GraphQL? This question opened the floodgates, and developers of all kinds jumped in with their reasons many of which revolved around common myths about GraphQL. Here are some of the most common responses people had. GraphQL? It's way too complex for simple APIs. Another person said, using GraphQL means saying goodbye to REST completely. And let's not forget the catching complaints. GraphQL doesn't have proper catching like REST does. Oh, and of course, there's always that one person who keeps it simple. GraphQL is garbage. It's a mixed bag of opinions. But you get the idea. There's just one answer to all this. Every product use case is different. Let's bust some of the popular myths. Some developers hear GraphQL and imagine it like a high-maintenance pet. They think, why bring in all this complexity when I'm just building a simple API? They picture GraphQL as this fancy new tool but they're just trying to get their crud create, read, update, delete operations done without turning it into a Broadway production. Yes, GraphQL does come with a learning curve. It's got schemas, resolvers, queries, all those fancy words, but it's not necessarily more complex than REST. Actually, in some cases, it might just be your new best friend, especially when it comes to making data requests less of a guessing game. Let me break it down with a little example. Let's imagine you're building a simple blog or e-commerce site. Yeah, I know. No one actually builds these from scratch anymore because hello Shopify and WordPress exist, right? But hey, maybe you're between jobs or looking to beef up that are some with something impressive. So, you decide, why not, and start creating this site from scratch. Initially, it's easy. You set up a REST API to fetch a list of posts, boom, done. But wait, the next day you get your one user mom counts, and you decide to level up the blog by showing the author info alongside each post. Uh-oh, now you need to either tweak your REST API or add a whole new endpoint. Now, here's where GraphQL steps in like the superhero that REST never asked for. With GraphQL, no backend changes are needed. Just add one more field to your client side query in Voil, your new feature is live. Effortless, right? You're now sipping coffee like the pro dev you are. The age-old complaint, GraphQL lacks proper catching. It's like saying, this new high-tech sports card doesn't have cup holders. REST endpoints are often resource-based, meaning each endpoint corresponds to a specific data type, for example, users, posts. This design makes catching straightforward because HTTP catching methods like get requests work well. But GraphQL isn't leaving you stranded on the highway. GraphQL needs a bit more nuanced catching. Imagine it like this instead of a one-size-fits-all cache. You've got to build a cache that fits your specific needs. But don't worry, we've got tools like Apollo Client and Relay to help you. Think of it like assembling IKEA furniture. It's not as plug-and-play as REST catching. But once it's built, you're sitting pretty. Imagine this building a graphical API, no longer your task. Just say, hey AI, make me a schema for my super niche cat food delivery startup, and in the blink of an eye it's done. Resolvers, queries, the whole thing, while you sit there, questioning your career choices. Let's face it, you won't be asking for overtime anymore because, guess what, there won't be any work left for you. AI doesn't need sleep, and AI sure as hell doesn't care about your weekend plans. Your boss will be high-fiving their new AI overlord while you sit in the corner, wondering why you fiox that prod code which gave birth to these AI tools. But here's where it gets interesting, demand control will be the next big thing in GraphQL. The AI tools will automatically optimize the expensive queries as per the usage and requirements. There are also some tools like Stepson and GraphQL Editor that automates building of schemas, queries, and resolvers. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and let me know in the comments what tool you're using to crush your graphical dreams.